Welcome to Big Mike's Kitchen. As you guys can see, it is a hot one here while I'm recording this. It is now July of 2023. But for you lot out there in Australia in particular, who I am making this video for, it is winter time. And what goes good with winter time better than some good old broccoli cheddar soup? This recipe that I'm going to offer to you lot is a very simple recipe that I've been making for quite a long time. And it's very simple, cost effective, and feeds at least eight people with very hearty appetites. So let's get our ingredients rounded up and let's start chopping those onions. So we've got two medium onions that we are going to chop, peel, and mince. Once you have these well cut and minced and set to the side, we are going to go ahead and get together our stock cubes. Now when it comes to stock cubes, you can use beef, vegetable, or in my case, chicken. I simply used two of these cubes to four cups of water. Simply put these in your bowl, pour in your hot water, stir it up, and you're ready to go. Next, we're gonna take a stick of butter and we're gonna add this on a high heat to a large four or six quart saucepan. Now we're gonna add all of our chopped up onions into the butter. And the next thing we're gonna do with this is, you'll never guess, of course, we're gonna take our large metal spoon and get to stirring. Stir all of this together, make sure the butter gets completely melted and the onions get soft. Once it's gotten there, you're gonna add a quarter cup of all-purpose flour. You're gonna want to give this all a good stir, make sure this roux is good and thick, and you're gonna wanna make sure that the onions are completely cooked through and soft and translucent, because once you have all this incorporated on a high heat, go ahead and turn that heat off, because next, you're going to take one pound of whole carrots. Once you have your carrots, you're going to chop the front and back ends off of them. You can peel them if you want. I didn't want to. I like the roughage. Then go ahead and shred your carrots up nice and finely. As you can see, we got quite a bit here. It almost looks like cheese, especially right here as we go to lift it off. But it's carrots, it's not cheese, that's for sure. So now that we've got all of our carrots shredded and the onions are translucent, we're gonna add our shredded carrots into this large saucepan. And once we have this in here, we are gonna go ahead and get ready to add a few more things. But here is another quick tip. All right, now hold on, hold on. I know everyone's gonna freak out. I know it's a lot of onions. I know it's a lot of carrots and that's gonna be okay. Because the thing is, once all this gets into the liquid, you are going to grind this up. I know it seems like a lot, but trust me, it'll be just fine. Next, we're gonna add our four cups of chicken stock to the carrot mixture. By the way, make another two cups of this stock. You're gonna need it. Now, as you can see, we're gonna add not two, but four cups of whole milk into the pot. Give this all a really, really good stir. And like I said, don't forget, you're gonna need to make another two cups of stock. And now for another tip. When it comes to adding the milk, you can also use fat-free milk for a lower fat option. You could also make this extra rich by using cream instead of milk. I personally think it's best to stick with whole milk because it has a good balance of cream as well as a little bit more of a lightness. You don't want the soup to be like a gloopy paste after all. So it's up to you. Like I said, thicker and richer is the cream. Normal and light, if you will, is the whole milk, but for a light, light recipe, you can use fat-free. But I don't recommend using instant milk or just powdered creamer either. To me, the texture just doesn't work and the flavor is a bit too chalky. Trust me, I've tried. Next, we're going to add our four cups worth of broccoli florets to the mixture. And now we're gonna turn the heat back on high to bring it to a boil. And we're gonna stir our broccoli florets, getting them well incorporated. And now we're going to add our two extra cups of chicken stock 
to the mix. Go ahead and stir that all in. Bring this up to the boil. And as you can see, it's boiling around the sides. The vegetables, everything is getting nice and soft. We're towards the top of the pan. That's okay, because we're going to simmer very shortly. But first, we have to place our lid on top. Now cook this on a low heat for 30 minutes. And now that 30 minutes is up, we're going to take the lid off. We're going to turn the heat off and have a quick word about cheeses. Now finally, when it comes to the cheeses, I do recommend using sharp or even extra sharp cheddar cheese. I think it yields a much stronger flavor profile. If you must, you can use processed cheese like Velveeta. You could also maybe switch it up and use mozzarella cheese or Monterey Jack. But me personally, stick with the cheddar. I wouldn't go American on this one. Go ahead and grate two cups of sharp cheddar cheese or regular cheddar, whichever. Look at that beautiful mountain. Like I said, two cups. Now that you have all those carrots and all those pieces of broccoli and all that liquid, you are going to need one of these. This is a stand mixer. You go ahead and you put this in and you grind it up to your heart's content. Me personally, I like to grind this until everything is uniformly soft and smooth. Don't freak out if it's not that way, but you are going to want to do this, I suggest it. If you can't, then you can cut up all of your pieces of broccoli into little teeny tiny pieces. But I think this is not only a good time saving measure, but it's also a really good texture to have it blended up nice and fine. And don't worry, I do suggest that you do this after, at the end. You don't want to do it before because since the liquid isn't that dense and the vegetables aren't broken down, it's going to make a big splattery mess. Again, I know. I've tried. Go ahead and use your stand mixer or immersion blender as it's also called and go to town. Get all those edges. Get all those chunks. Doesn't matter how long you got to do it. You just got to stir it and chop it. You want to make sure that you have a nice smooth consistency with your soup through and through. If you want it a little bit chunky, you don't got to go as hard as I am, but I like mine nice and uniform. So as you can see now, we've gotten this pretty smooth, well done and incorporated. I told you guys not to worry, it wouldn't be so hard to do. So now let's go ahead and continue. Now we've got our cheese that we are now going to slide on in. And don't worry, you can still leave this on a low heat. It doesn't have to go back on high at all. Just make sure you get all that cheese in there. Like I said, it's two cups worth. If you want to make it extra cheesy, you can add a third cup. Do whatever you like. But I don't want the cheese to be too overpowering, and this is somewhat of a hearty and somewhat healthy dish, if you can believe that. But no matter. We've got our cheese in there, and as you can see, we do what we do. Stir. But be careful. As you saw, mine almost came out of the pan. But yeah, like I said, there's plenty of residual heat. You don't have to bring it up to the boil. You can leave it on a low or you can even turn it off. But just continue to stir this up. Get all that cheese nice and melted and blended. In fact, let's get a close up. Look at that. Oh man, that looks delicious. Now that we've got this all very well stirred and we got the consistency we like, there's only one final thing left, and that's to add our seasonings. As you can see, I got me some nutmeg. We're going to pour in a nice generous amount around the top, as you can see. Next, we're going to go ahead and take our plain white table salt, and we're going to basically try to match the same pattern, as you can see right there. Of course, this is all by sight, and then the same thing goes with our black pepper. You can also add cayenne pepper or a little bit of garlic powder, or onion powder if you want, but I'm sticking just to these three seasonings because they're basic enough for me. Go ahead and give that another stir, of course. Get this well incorporated, put the lid on, let it sit and mingle for about five minutes, and then next, we're going to go ahead and take our ladle, and that's right, pour it on into those bowls. As you can see, 
This is a very rich and hearty and delicious soup. I promise you are going to love it and it is irresistible. You won't be able to handle this. I know I couldn't. And trust me, you'll be making this quite often. Now, let's have a seat. We are now all ready to tuck in. As you guys can see, I've got me broccoli cheddar soup. I've got myself some Vegemite toast. And you can also add any additional things you want once it's done. In my case, I'll tell you what I've added to this delicious broccoli cheddar soup. I've added diced ham. I cut mine nice and thick. It's gonna taste really, really good. I know it because I've had it before because I've tried it. So let's give this a taste. Let's see what we got here. Let's see the fruits of our labor. Mm. Mm. Excellent. Excellent. This is perfect for any occasion, any time of the year, any season, anything at all. The possibilities are endless. Mm. I certainly hope that this warmed you lot up. It's definitely working for me. <laughs> but I thought because you guys have been so nice to me out there in Australia, and you guys have enjoyed a lot of my cooking videos, and it being nice and cool out there, I thought I'd share this one with you guys, because I love you all so much. Mm. Definitely add the diced ham. It's fine without it, but it doesn't hurt it. Thank you guys so much for watching my broccoli cheddar soup recipe. Let me know if you guys have made it. Let me know how it turned out. Tell me if you guys think the diced ham was a good idea. And you tell me if you think Vegemite pairs well with it. You guys take care, be well, share this video, seriously. I really mean it, share it with everybody. And I hope you guys like and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more recipes, as well as music reactions and movie reviews. I love you all very much, cheers.